to the study session on the Forest Lake Improvement Board, Lower Long Lake Improvement Board, and Upper Long Lake Improvement Board. If we could first start with the Pledge of Allegiance. United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So with study sessions, we do them a little bit differently where uh, public comment isn't right away. It's after some information's been given so you can comment on what you see. So we'll start first with uh, calling a meeting to order and then reviewing of the posted meeting notices. Clerk Brooke. Okay, uh, the three um, lake boards that are represented here, there was a notice for each of those, uh, time, timely posted in the appropriate places. Um, and there is a form present for Forest Lake, Lower Lake, and Upper Long Lakes. Nice to see everyone together. So next we'll go to the history of uh, the operating protocol of the weir. We have our director, Noah, Mah Noah Mahalski, director of DPW. Thank you. Um, I'll give you an overview as, as I know things out there and um, the history. I've been involved since 2007 when I started at the township. Um, I was not involved in the negotiations in 2019 to township to take over responsibility to this. That was Leo Savoy and Tom Trice, my predecessor. So I just wanted to put that in there. All right, so um, people don't know maybe what a weir is. Um, a weir is a water level control structure. They can take many forms. The one on the left, the picture, is actually the weir that we're talking about. Uh, the one on the right, upper, is kind of what the weir used to look like. It used to be a couple of slits with boards uh, placed down in them to control the structure of the lake. Um, so that shows you kind of, it can be a small wooden dam to a large apparatus like we have on, on Forest Lake. Um, uh, then it's important to uh, talk about the watershed here um, because it is a highly urbanized watershed and it's a uh, it's not just Forest Lake it control I mean as you guys know it controls other lakes in the chain um, so Hammond Lake, Turtle Lake, Upper Long Lake, Lower Long Lake, Island Lake all are tributaries to this. Um, Square Lake is also in the watershed but it's skipped around by the uh, drainage coming off of Telegraph Road. Uh, Island Lake has its own weir that's the one in the picture there with the snow cover and then Hammond Lake has a standpipe, which they recently um, reconstructed, which would have been two years ago or so. And that's important because it adds to the flashy nature of this watershed that we're talking about here. Um, the old standpipe was rusted and plugged, and they basically put a brand new pipe in there. And so now where the muck and the condition of the pipe used to hold water back a little bit longer, now that water goes directly in and at a faster rate. Uh, also, uh, the lakes are uh, regulated by the DEQ and the t uh, Eagle and the township, uh, plus the down, uh, the water, receiving waters for this weir are also regulated by the township and by Eagle. There's streams that are downstream of it, um, wetlands, floodway, floodplain. There's the Forest Lake Golf Course. There's Franklin Road, which has had issues. We had to pump water across that roadway in 2011. And then Lasher Road, if we put too much water into the downstream system, we overtop Lasher Road. And I'll show you where that happens as well. So, um, it's a large urban watershed. If you think of a watershed, it's a bowl, okay? And any of the water that falls inside the bowl goes into that watershed, and any water that falls outside the bowl goes to another watershed, okay? So it's many thousands of acres of land drained to these lakes and are part of this system, okay? Um, in addition, uh, many other small ponds, tributaries, pipes, storm drains, road drainage, all those things uh, are associated and also make this an urban flashy type environment. And when I say flashy, I mean um, subject to the rain and dry in a very large way, right? When rain falls, it goes directly into the system and you may go from a no trickle in a stream up to a raging torrent, right? So that 
occurs quickly in an urban environment because if you think about how, you know, before humans came and modified this area, it all fell on regular land and a lot of it soaked in, but it did take a lot longer to get to the streams in the past, right? So now when rain falls on parking lots and rooftops, it's concentrated and it's quickly put into that system. And that becomes key. Um, main variables on the input side, weather, timing, and type of precipitation. Um, again, how, what's the duration of the precipitation event? What is the makeup? Is it snow? Will it be held on the land? Or is it liquid? Will it go into the system quickly? Outputs, evaporation, irrigation, the weir itself, right? So riparians have the right to draw water from the lakes. It also, the water evaporates, and also the water goes over the weir. Um, just for points of clarity, um, we had multiple events. Again, the flashy nature, we've had multiple events since I've been in, involved with the weir where it's overtopped Club Drive. Um, 11, 12, I'll, I'll talk about more of the dates later, but 11, 12, 21, 11, 18, 2022 was an extreme drought year, so we were the other way. But 2012, for entrance, uh, second driest year on record. Uh, 2022, last summer, ninth driest year on record. 2021, seventh wettest year on record. 2011, number one wettest year ever for Metro Detroit. 2018, number two wettest year ever in Metro Detroit. Why? We can debate that all day, but reality, it's here. Okay, back to the watershed. You see the lakes that I mentioned, the Long Lake, Forest Lake. Forest Lake's right here, that's where the weir is. All these other lakes are tributary to that system, right? And all the water, you'll see it in the kind of downstream map, all the water flows southeast to basically Detroit down there, or southeast to tributaries to the Rouge River. And we're the headwater of the Rouge River. Correct. Yep. 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 Uh, the middle branch of the Rouge. Right. So, yep. So there's Wixom's, the headwaters of the upper branch over there, and the lower branch starts in Ypsilanti area, or a little bit more towards Detroit, but there's an outlet from the wastewater treatment plant down there. Uh, skip. So downstream map. Uh, you can see, here's that, here's the weir here, that location. This is where it crosses Franklin Road. Down here is where it crosses Losher Road, okay? This whole system, Werner Ponds up in here, tributary to this area. The big pond uh, across the street from the township, tributary to that area as well. Um, but this, it's key to just consider, Telegraph was at an elevation where we did not flood Telegraph in 2011, but we did flood and Claude Losher Road in 2011. Again, one of the, the number one wettest year on record, and that was the year we were pumping water over Franklin Road and all the issues that come along with that, noise, people not happy about that, all those things. So again, the, this is an actual picture before reconstruction, so, doesn't take an expert to understand that that's not in good repair. Um, <laughs> so historically, again, the weir was a set of boards slipped into a slot, similar to that Island Lake control structure. The structure uh, controlled by adjacent residents, Ron Cousineau, for a number of years. There was a Forest Lake Outlet Management Association formed that took all, that was in play during the SAD to rebuild the weir, and then also in the management of that and the transfer of that uh, power or jurisdiction over to the township in 2019. So clearly structural issues were present. If so Forest Lake's a man-made lake. Um, if you know that area, the Lake of the Woods um, is a significant amount lower than the actual Forest Lake, right? And Club Drive makes up the dam for that area, right? So the concern is that high water levels, one of the concerns is, is that high water levels, A, it overtops that road, there's a washing out potential of that road, it's a core log road under there, so there's intertwined logs 
that are laid down in the wetland and then the road was built on top. I mean, it's a, if you drive it, it's banked like a racetrack club drive in there because the one side of the road's sinking. Um, so maintenance was required, right? If this structure at the time failed, it would drain the lake significantly. Um, clearly, Island Lake has an average depth of like 10 feet, um, so you'd drain much of Island Lake um, and Forest Lake. Clearly, a lot of the areas in the um, canals and stuff like that would be drained if that blew out. Um, we've been cognizant of this issue. We have applied to FEMA three times to try to get disaster mitigation funding, but it doesn't, it's not been passed due to whatever cost benefit analysis they do at FEMA and the state police. So we have looked for funding to place um, sheet piling along the uh, roadway there to protect the road from blowing out. FEMA doesn't see the benefit to that project, is the layman's terms of how I can say it. Prior to 2019 and us coming into play, and that is another actual picture of the weir down there. So all the cement on the side sloughing off, you can see rebar sticking out, bad looking situation. Uh, we have helped in the past with vectoring. There's a um, few years ago, maybe 2019, the inlet became plugged. We vectored that inlet out. There was a high, water was flowing over Club Drive at the point, at that point. Unclogging, sandbagging of Club Drive, sandbagging of the um, uh, wetlands adjacent to Club Drive, and then the pumping over the road in 2010, 2011 that I mentioned. So then the SAD, the process started uh, in 2006 when the residents who control this private structure at the time asked the township to rebuild the weir through a special assessment district. Um, importantly, that did not include replacing or servicing the inlet pipe to the weir, which is depicted right here on the map. So that is a piece of infrastructure that's original to the weir that was not touched in the SAD. So that may be an issue in the future, may or may not be. Um, operational protocol was also kind of part of that uh, management association, the SAD project, bringing in HRC, the township engineer, to design the weir. There were these protocols made, which will were included in the packet and we'll talk a, more about in a little bit. Um, but the level settings are based largely on Ron's operation of the weir in the past and things we've learned in the overtopping of the road and the infrastructure issues that that brings. So then the agreement itself, there was no historic easement for access to the property of the weir, so that was a concern. Uh, there was an operations protocol and it, it, it wasn't codified and put into place as the operational, true operational protocol, the weir. Uh, very narrow language for the annual O&M of the weir and so it earmarks $1,500 annually um, without kind of approval from the board. Um, but if it goes above that, like let's say this inlet pipe, which I've noted there has to be rebuilt or lined or even just inspected, that would probably be over $1,500. So the process there, if you've read the agreement, is to approach the lake boards with that cost and get an approval. Um, if they don't approve that, then I don't know what happens. The pipe continues to be in this situation that it's in. Um, we um, enlist the help of Forest Lake Country Club because they're a repairing right on the uh, right on the weir. They could be out there every day to monitor it. Uh, they can augment my ability and my staff's ability from the township to be out there and be on top of the change. Like we're gonna, he's gonna raise the weir tomorrow and like. He does that operation, Ryan Moore at the Forest Lake Country Club, because they're there 24-7, basically. And that's tied to the access easement and operating protocols that the township has an interagency agreement with the Country Club in that regard. Um, so there is some leeway within the agreement, and we do apply logic to that. So I did mention how he's raising the weir up tomorrow. So we had the back-to-back -back 
the ice storm and then the six inch storm in mid-March. Um, at that time frame, it pushed the lake up to about 39 inches, right? So there's protocol that kick in summer months to lower it down and start to pass water through the weir at that point. We've done that. It's down. It's like 32.9 today after the two inches that we got this weekend. So we, the protocol says that once it gets to 34, you close it back up. So tomorrow he's going to be closing that back up. Then we basically, you know, when I talked to Ryan today, there's <laughs> seven to after tonight's fraction of an inch, about 0.16 inches of rain, we're not expecting rain for the next seven days, right? So I'm comfortable closing that up at that point because I feel like we're not going to get the precipitation over the next few days. That would cause, because the reason we opened it up back in, uh, after those back-to-back -back storms is the water was starting to go over Club Drive. It was about halfway down Club Drive at that point. So, and it was flowing in the little canal next to the, the berm there. So we, it was going to be going over Club Drive because of the snow melt from those two back-to-back -back storms. And I think we got some rain actually like three days after that second storm. So um, there is some logic and some kind of triggers that come into play if we reach those high water or low water marks. Um, the protocol is designed to keep a narrow range in the water depths, right? And we understand there's people who want the, there's probably equal numbers of people who want it higher or lower the lake. Um, a lot of people, especially people who want it lower are on the canals, right? Because they can't make it under that bridge. But if it's too low on the canals, there's a cement base under the bridge. So if it's too low, then you hit your motor on the, uh, the, the cement base for the bridge. So we try to, A, number one, it's weather, um, and we try to, be, we want to protect the infrastructure, right? The homes, the road blowing out. Secondarily is enjoyment of the lake. Um, and uh, again, the infrastructure is the top, but um, we do have leeway within the protocol. Um, I know there's suggestions on how to change that. I would defer to Mark on what mecha because one of the things that's interesting to me is the entity that turned over Forest Lake Outlet Weir Management Association no longer exists, right? They turned over that authority to the township, then they disbanded. So, you know, that brings in an interesting a lawyer question on how that how we undo that if there even are modifications to be done to this, right? What authority do I have to even modify the plan that's part of a legal agreement? Um, so uh, what I, the mechanism I would suggest, again, any legal hurdles we got to get over, but would be to bring in an engineer and to have them take a look at it again. Now, HRC did review this operational protocol two different times um, in 2010 and in 2015. And I know the operating protocol was not officially accepted by the management association until 2019 when they entered into this agreement with the township so there was some negotiation on that plan through before it came to our you know and there was some revision again because the engineers got brought in twice on it so that's um i was now again i wasn't involved in the negotiations in 2019 to bring this into the township's purview it, before that time it had always been this is private this is a piece of private infrastructure stay away from it at the township other than the emergency unclogging and that type of stuff that we would do out there so that it? that's it all right so then what we'll do is we'll open up public comment get some comments and then the board can have an open discussion all right, so if anybody is here for public comment, please come on up to the podium to state your name and which lake you're looking to talk about and how you feel about the weir. Well, uh, I'd like we're, to make a comment. We, we are not, person. now we're the, we're the part of the board, so okay. you will get a chance when the board talks, but this is about public comment first. I'm just seeing if these two gentlemen are not interested. Are you, are you interested? Okay. <laughs> And I know some of the board members were taking notes, so we will definitely all have a chance to, to talk when it's our turn. And the only thing we ask is that it's three minutes, um, and you may have questions for the board, but we'll answer those questions or, or not at, during our discussion. Okay. Right. Thank you. Here or there? Right there where you That's are. That's good. Thank you. Um, so my name is Jim Whalen. I live on Upper Long Lake, and uh, being, I know the statement was made about 
the, um, the, some of the people on the canals want the, the water lower up in our canal, we want the water up higher. Uh, we, we went through a dredging project years ago, but it hit hard pan at a much higher depth than I think was expected. We spent a lot of money to do that, and, and if the water gets down too low, it's very difficult to get uh, through, the, through the canals and or getting our boats on and off lifts or, or that type of thing. So we would, uh, a lot of our neighbors keep saying we should, we'd love to see it set at 36 as a, a target depth. And I know that the, uh, the depth is like 34 that we're trying to hit in the summer. The big thing is though, it, when um, we get these dry summers like we always do, and as, as it was mentioned last year, it was a drier than normal summer. Um, we were down uh, probably to 28 or 26 or something like that. And it was very difficult getting boats in and out of the canal, so it really hindered our, our use of the, the lake. Um, or, or, you know, it made it difficult, let's just put it that way. Um, and I know some people had problems getting their boats on and off hoist. The, uh, the concern that I had heard was that there was a, a missed, misreading of the, uh, the depth of the, the water last year, which made some uh, a, a, change, a change was made in the weir and we were down like two inches lower than we should have been at the target at the beginning of the year and we were down that two, interest, two inches for the whole rest of the year. Uh, one of the things I talked to Ron about was putting in some type of a uh, automated measurement system so we had more accurate uh, readings of that and I, was I would propose that we look at something like a, a web camera that's focused on the the uh, uh, measurement device all the time. So at any point in time, we can go out to a website, see what the actual measurement is. So, that, you know, I get uh, comments from my neighbors all the time, oh, the water looks too low, what's going on? You know, there's a lot of concern. So um, I try and answer that when I can or go out to, to one of the measuring devices and, and just check and so I can get answers back to, to my neighbors because they know I take a, keep a lot of uh, notes on that. I try and get uh, rainfall measurements for Ron and prov provide it to him and he, he keeps track of the, the measurements of the actual water levels. So um, I think we just need to do a, uh, a little better job of keeping um, those, the heights that we need because when it gets extra low, I get complaints and, and because people are concerned about uh, the boating issue. Um, so I think that's my, my key things that, and I guess, well, the other thing, it seems to me the, the measure, the, the guidance was set as, you know, putting in two-inch boards, and here we have a crank thing that we paid for, and there's never a thing, uh, never a guidance that say go down a half inch, go up an, an inch. It's, you know, very broad uh, guidance and, and going up two or four inches or something like that. I think we ought to try and be a little more uh, uh, accurate, a little more fine-tuning of the measurements. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to speak? No? Okay. So we'll close public comment and now we can take it to the board. Um, I know everybody has a lot to say probably so we could start if anyone wants to volunteer to start first or if you have questions of Noah too we can have Noah come back up. I think Mike did I see you in? Yeah I, had, you know, I got a couple of questions. No I'm just curious. So so if you, would you put up the map again? So Hammond Lake has a control there's no control structure there correct there's a small pond in between the two like a cross square lake road that Hammond goes into first then the turtle structure and there's also a county drain that empties into Turtle Lake that's the one that bypasses square lake road okay well, Hammond Hammond Lake uh, drains into our lake I'm over by yeah. Jim's house well there's a little pond that it goes through and then down to that area right. yep yep yeah. That's exactly. Eventually, but remember, there's a lot. That's why we're trying to. A yeah, lot of times, uh, people focus the on their spot. We need you to see it's a lot through. bigger than one lake. W where's so the county it, drain? It affects at? someone before you. It's <laughs> so here. I can <laughs> see it on the downstream map. I think no. So the county drain bypasses um, right here. It's that's Square, Square Lake. Okay. 
It takes all the drainage from Telegraph Road and the Miracle Mile up there, and this is the county drain. It comes right through that neighborhood right there, and that that's empties where the in. Salt comes and that's go that goes into that's Turtle. Salt. Yep. And that's and that, salt. Yeah, that's where the complaints about salt from oh, Telegraph man. Road. Yep, yep. And that's why it actually bypasses Square Lake. They had a they, back in the day. They got MDOT to bypass their lake, so they didn't get all that water dumped into there. Um, but you can actually see there's a safety path right on Square Lake Road that goes over that drain. Mm -hmm. It's a 20 foot deep ditch there. It's okay. a huge drain. So it handles a lot of flow coming through that area. So, yeah, and then Hammond dumps in over, <clears throat> uh, that's Hammond right there, right? And dumps in over on this side and comes down. So we've never had anybody try to make a model of the of the of the lakes and the all the inputs and no i mean again with all these lakes involved i don't know that there's ever been a hydrologic study overall yeah. okay. to look at the you know overall inputs and outputs of these this lake system and do, do we know when we talk about set the weir to 34 inches do we know what the the absolute elevation of that is does somebody know what the absolute elevation of that is i'll have to defer to him because i was not it was if there were engineering time. yeah we could get <laughs> i don't know where the plans are for the sad but it would be on the okay. engineering uh, plans it's published i don't know it from the top of my head but it's like 900 feet above sea level you know but yeah but somebody has compared the the measurement device with the sea level device okay you know so but and I don't actually have that data with me. Okay. And, and I thought it was kind of irrelevant for us anyway. But somebody somebody has done that. Well, it's irrelevant for us unless Club Drive is, in fact, sinking on one side. Right. I mean, the data the for the weir will be in the, the engineering yeah. plans. The datum they used will be in the engineering plans. So. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yep. Noah, I, I thought you did a great job, and thank you. So two, maybe three questions. So this new pipe on Hammond Drain, uh, or Hammond Lake, this, that, that's causing this to come in faster, that's draining into Turtle Lake? That's draining into this uh, this upper system right here, right? So there's upper, Turtle upper Lake. Long lake. Right. Upper Long Lake. Upper Long Lake. So yeah. like, Turtle Lake it, does it, have a weir, but we've never been able we to talk. access it. So <laughs> even when Tom was here and okay. you know all of this, Turtle Lake does have a weir, and because they're so very private, um, we've never been able to see that weir. My hunch is that with the advent of this new pipe, it probably pushed some sludge through. And so I, I think that is a reason that we're getting a faster. It's definitely, yeah. Yeah, so, so again, I don't know, again, legally what we're allowed to do, but if we could ever get anyone to investigate what's happening on that Turtle Lake Weir, we might have a, a, some information. And I don't know what we would do with that. And that's why we're bringing you all together, because remember, this is all private. Right. Although I would love you to open up a boat launch, and then we can definitely talk about the township. Right. So, <laughs> um, but so, so this is private. We need to probably bring you all together to talk about it. If you want to do. Turtle Lakes never come to the table. Okay. So we we even so on Forest Lake on that you know the opposite end of of where I am, there are Turtle Lake residents right that that have houses there right. we've we've reached out to them we've asked them to have somebody you know get permission to investigate Terry Cunahan could give you all the much more information than you probably <laughs> want to know about that and we're we've never been granted access I know that from the uh, POA or whatever you call that other board depending on what access and what you're interested in i have friends who live in there yeah so i think if we were clear of what we need and what we want we just want to see what it does and how it operates okay i think that would help potentially and they there's a large conservation easement over turtle lake and part of the development agreement for it so there may be even information on the deq you know, they had to go through some, jump through some hoops to be able to build that development. Um, maybe there's some protocols in that or information and even their and wetland permit. We're looking to get access to I think look just at the to weir. Give us some information about what's going on with that weir. Okay. It might help us to, um, as this gentleman said, have a little bit more precise control potentially. The other thing you mentioned is about uh, legally with the Eagle. What are we allowed to do or not allowed to do where that overflow? sort of, I call it a ditch, right? So when it goes over the berm, which Eagle has told us we're not allowed to touch, what are we allowed to do? So for instance, when 
Club Drive was closed. They put up some big road signs. I don't know who's in charge of that. Well, there are road signs now flat down uh, in that ditch okay. that, that are, I guess, obstructing it. And I don't know what we're allowed. You know, road signs, I'm sure we're allowed to remove. Yeah, I but mean. What happens when the trees fall? Yeah, you could, that little swale ditch right, along right. the side there, we've dug that out over the years to promote flow from that. That is not considered a wetland. That It's really a conveyance there. It could be all piped in, right? So right. we've dug that out over the years. We've raked it out. Any trees, even if a tree fell directly into a wetland, as long as you don't disturb the soils, you can take that out. So, so I guess my question is maybe the opposite. So let's say the tree falls and helped us build that berm, which again would help us on the lake. Are we allowed to leave it there? Oh, yeah. There's nothing required. In fact, the DEQ would rather see woody debris in all water bodies. Because it provides that habitat. That might for help. Yeah. I mean, that might help, you know. I'd rather see a, fill the whole lake in with plants. Yeah. I mean, that's a very now, productive are, environment are, in their view. So, dead, dead trees that have fallen. Yeah, I mean, they want woody debris in there because that promotes the small plant and, and okay. you know, the, the, what do you call them, without a skeleton. Well, those, <laughs> those signs yeah. are between the Weir and 1337 okay. Club. If, and yeah, I mean, we'll get it. That would have been our engineering manage that project or place the sewer on Porter's Lane, which resulted right, in the so closure. Right, so they're down on the in okay. that swale thing. Thank you. Ron? Yeah, uh, I have a question on the easement that you have with the, with the, with the landowner. Does that easement include the inlet pipe? I don't believe so. I looked at it this morning in the exhibits. I don't believe include the inlet pipe. Because Ryan has to go to the end of the inlet pipe from time to time, and I've done it lately too, to clear the debris. We actually have to go over there to make sure that the inlet pipe is not clogged, particularly in the fall time when branches start to fall down and so on and so forth, or if there's a thunderstorm branches get in there and, and yeah i mean that's why we've actored it out and when it got plugged when you and tom were out on the end of the dock there that right spring morning and two you know like yeah, five well, six get, years ago yeah. you were there when yep. it was clogged yep uh, so i'm thinking that it's important that we have that easement because we uh or forest lake country club is maintaining that opening right now yeah. They are. Yeah. They, they, they maintained that little dock over the opening and everything. Well, that, he had to rebuild it a little bit because yeah. it was unsafe for him to walk out there. At the yeah, he of did dock. it. Yeah. Ryan and his team. Ryan did that. Yeah. Did you have a comment about what? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've got the easement and the easement um, references the forest lake control structure which shall include the intake and discharge piping connected to the structure there so it does I remember so we have that all was the brains at the table <laughs> you all bring something special to the table <laughs> <laughs> and you know that brings up a good point there are people at, like I went out there two weeks ago and somebody had cranked it uh, so there's bike lock on it right but it has some leeway and so somebody cranked it, you know, whoever it was, somebody walked onto the property, trespassed in my opinion, cranked the weir, so augmented what the setting was versus what it was supposed to be set at, right? So there are those access and security issues out there as, as well. So that's just another point to consider. It's, you know, um, proper to be aware of people out there because people are currently doing stuff to subvert what the plan is, so. And it is, even though it may not seem like we could tell, you can absolutely tell when it's been moved from where we leave it. So we have protocol for how we're going to operate <laughs> it, and when yeah. they're not followed, we can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you didn't mention when I, the I'm weir sure was you being, do. <laughs> weir was being controlled, but there was a, a volunteer on Upper Long Lake in 1988 who kept records mm -hmm. of the weir, and basically the numbers that you're working to that are in your agreement are, are based on data from 1988. Now, of course, they had two by fours and two by sixes, you know, so <laughs> as opposed to what Jim was talking about being pre pre precise, all they had was two by fours and two by sixes to, to, to control the water level. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the settings that you've got on your chart right now are basically based on a historic data. Historic yeah. data. Yeah, I mean, it was all from that management group. It was all, you were involved, right? And But it never got signed off on, right? But this is the protocol that was accepted when the agreements were made with Bloomfield Township. The question is, if we want to, if you guys desire to change that, what is the mechanism and for that? And is it possible? Involved, right? yeah. These are private lakes. And also, would we stay involved? Because if you're talking about micromanaging this on a higher level, again, this, we're using private land here that we are not supposed to be involving public tax dollars on, we obviously can't have somebody micromanaging it, so then you would then consider taking back ownership and and we would be out. So there, there is a level where you've pushed it so far that it's no longer legally allowed for our, I don't, we'll talk about like what's legal, what's not legal, but there are limits to what we are allowed to do and we are, this protocol falls under what we can do. But if you are talking about somebody out there moving quarter inches, half inches, uh, I'm willing to say that that might be outside of a scope we would ever be able to attest to. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend okay. no, in, in, quarter inch or a half inch or even one inch. And generally, yeah. right, I manage the weir like they manage any impoundment. Right. We need to make room for the winter and the spring rains, right? So the snow that will fall in the winter and the spring rains that in the three-day cycles that you get into in April and May, that we have room in that lake system. Had we held water in that lake system, even back when we got all the letters a month ago right. and we were at a low water level, we would be flowing over Club Drive right now, right? So um, that's why we have to be conservative to protect the infrastructure. And when I say infrastructure, not just that road, everybody's property, all the seawalls, that if that lake gets drained to an extent, then they all fail, right? There's that's the infra the home values right that's intrinsic upon and that's how any impoundment that's how like if you were desirous of having wrc come in here and make a legal lake level that's set by a judge then that's how they would manage the lake they would lower it in the fall to make room for that winter precipitation and the spring rains that are just cyclically expected so and it's funny because 2021, I don't know if you mentioned that year, but that was an extremely wet year that I will never forget because <laughs> being somebody who's downstream on a hill that all water in the southern end of Bloomfield Township, all of your water comes to us, um, my house was destroyed. And I don't have a lake. I don't have water sewer. It was literally just water on that. Imagine all that water went into your lake. So it is normal to have higher levels in that year. People were right before all those rains. You need to let more water in. You need, and within a week we got flooded. Just yeah, and literally, it, I so have it flowed over Club house. Drive twice, <laughs> and for significant periods of yeah. time, you know, at least a month in that second, the July 25th rain event, right? And and it was highly concentrated down your way oh, by the so like so the, concentrated, like the Franklin like Cider Mill. I mean, these were significant <laughs> rain events that yeah. were. I've heard 100-year rain events, I can agree with that. I've heard 1,000-year rain events yeah. recently, even out of some people down in Madison Heights and Royal Oak We had 16 area. inches in a three-month period that we normally get eight, yeah. I think was the norm. Yep. We I mean, had more than double our rain allotment, and I, there's nowhere for it to go. year on record, <laughs> and I just tried to look. They've been keeping records yeah. since early 1900s. So. And that's so, when we asked Eagle to come out. We paid them to come out right. to say, can we, let's say for a better word, fortify the berm Right, so we could hold more water, and nope, they shot us down. Can't, because you know, on the other side of that swale, oh no, that's a wetland or whatever they call yeah, it. Lake of the Woods. And no, no, on on the Forest Lake. Oh, side, oh, oh so like opposite that little outlet, we had them come out. It wasn't it? We paid them a hundred bucks. wasn't a lot of money, and they literally said, nope, you can't. Because that was, that was the original plan, right? I was even going to pay to put in a seawall okay. around the property. And nope, they said no. So, and, and um, Olivia from the township talked to them, and we, we got nowhere. Yeah, and, you know, so the downstream area has its 
issues as well, right? There was a chapter 20 drain that was proposed in there in the 70s. It failed to go through. That um, outlet area is basically choked off wetlands at this point, so it doesn't pass the water efficiently downstream, right? So then we get a lot of comments about Forest Lake and them desiring to keep the lake low, right? But intrinsically, Forest Lake has floodway within the driving range of their golf course, right? Intrinsically, if you were to, they would want to, if they didn't want a wet golf course, they'd be holding water in the lake, right? Let a, not letting it out through their golf course, right? So that doesn't hold weight to me. I know Ryan Moore and how we discuss operations of the weir. He doesn't make a move on that weir unless I know about it and vice versa, right? So he's not out there. <laughs> Let's see if I can let some water out today or whatever, you know, the like each one of the letters made comments about Forest Lake desiring to let water out of that system. In fact, they would rather hold more water in that carrying system and let it out in the winter per se so that it doesn't Im impact the golfers. That being said, it's floodway. Floodway is meant to flood. Floodway is even more than floodplain in a way that it, it will flood every time it rains, right? So I don't really have much love either for if you say to me, oh, I'm aggrieved because floodplain floods, well, Suri, you know, yeah, like, <laughs> buyer beware. He you means know. that in the most loving way possible, we're softening <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> no, <laughs> that we have a great working relationship with the golf yeah. course, right? But I it know. is floodway. They know that, yeah. right? They know it's regulated as such. So that's just a that's a fact of the matter, you know. Yeah. So. Oh, I got a quick question. Right, too. Let's I, make sure, Ron. Do you have some more? Uh, I feel like you have one. I had a, uh, a conversation with Ryan today, but I've been working with Ryan ever since he's been doing this project, and and we have some recommendations to change the language uh, of the operational control because he's he's operating it so to speak, yep. and I operated it, and I didn't approve the, the way you guys had written it. Well, and I'll be clear, this was not our work product. This was Terry Cunahan, this was you were involved, the Lake Board, this was not driven, like the township said, you guys need an operating protocol when we update this weir. HRC was involved, but I have notes from the meetings, it was driven by the Lake Board. It wasn't where the township came in and said, you're doing it this way, right? This document well, existed I'm, I'm, far in advance. So. I'm suggesting some changes so, so, it, so it makes more sense. I'm all for that, right? But I don't know what the mechanism is for that. So let me know what the mechanism is because I'm, Ryan and I are willing to work with you or anybody on that mechanism to get the language more clearly stated. So, so we operate it the way we want to. I get it, yep. And I would probably have like HRC involved as the you know agent of the township. You don't know who the other entity That's is. Really, That's really, yeah. what I mean. Like we can't, so let's talk to legal here. What do you do? They don't exist anymore. Who, the the people who are the other side of this agreement with the township. Forest or Lake Forest Outlet Management Lake, Association. Yeah, that, they disbanded, so they don't exist anymore. So that's who we have an agreement with. That's who we have to make changes with, correct? The, the only limitation we have on the protocols is the access, uh, access easement agreement. And the easement that the township has over the private property where the weir is located allows for uh, reasonable access for the necessary maintenance and or repair, including the maintenance to clear. Uh, bu 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 intended to provide continuing tended to provide for the continuing periodic adjustments to the existing control structure so, so that's what our easement grants so could they create obviously you can't have just one lake represented because your lake has different needs than all their lakes could they create another entity where they're all involved and then we create a new agreement with that entity well the problem is this is the township's access agreement. So to the extent we're oh. using agents like Forest Lake Country Club to do the work when you know the township staff's not available to do it every day, um, 
that's the purpose of the operating agreement that we have with the Forest Lake Country Club. That's between the township and the country club. Okay. So they're acting as our agent in conformity with the easement. The, the reason I, I read that portion about the periodic adjustment, it's not daily adjustment, it's periodic adjustment right. as necessary. So we can adjust the protocols. Uh, the township can do that. The township established those protocols based upon the input from various parties. We can adjust them. There's no magic to it. Uh, but you need to bear in mind that this is not something that we're going to be able to go out on a daily right. basis to evaluate things. It's periodic so adjustments. It's seasonal with a couple randos, but we're not talking even weekly. That won't ever be what something is, that we can take on. What is the definition of periodic? So that gave probably you a way of more than just the two openings. Like probably, because again, you have winter and spring, because again, this is private, and he's a public entity, that periodic gave him. I don't think we care. Well, it sounds like some might want a seriously micromanaged, possibly daily, weekly type thing, which we would never be able to agree with, versus some that understand that some years would be higher or lower. So even each lake has very different ideas of this agreement. So if we were to make changes, I would want someone from every lake represented while I'm, I well, can't I would just recommend deal with one HRC lake. be involved and, because and I don't want to. Right. right, and then you get into, Here's, okay, who's paying for HRC to be there, right? It's kind of in kind. It wouldn't be us, it township, would be right. the SAD. You would, that's what I'm saying. Like all of this does stem where you're all connected. So anytime you're hiring an engineer, you're all connected. So I wouldn't want one lake represented. I think you all have to be represented because it's you that are affected by it, and it's also you that have to pay for that. Yeah, the only thing I'm suggesting is that document that came from the township to Forest Lake that said, here's how you operate the weir. And periodic, and we're fine with that. March to April, we set it to 28. Then in April to May, it's set to 32. And uh, May to June 1st, it's set to 34. And then in the labor labor day, uh, the November is 32. And then all winter, it's set at 24. So that's periodic. I agree. We're not we're not talking half inches or one inch or so on and so forth. That's that's five different times of the year where we have goals. Now remember, yep. though, the Mother Nature has different goals, too. Like, you may want 34, and she may say you get no rain. Like, there's sometimes where I can't do it. Well, and we had competing, I think, what Danny's saying is we want to we want to get all the interests at the table, right? Because even the speaker earlier had different interests than you're talking about, right? Yeah. So that's why the interests are getting everybody together. I was concerned about the legal barriers to modifying the agreement. Sounds like that's maybe a non-issue. Then it comes down to getting all you guys together, making the investment to, because again, I'm not going to, you know, sit around five people at a table and then make up a new protocol. I'm going to have it sniff tested by the engineers that were involved HRC. on the rebuilding of the weir and the uh, protocol in the beginning, right? So that's the process. We can be logical, you know, and, and uh, I, I just got what your proposal was before I walked in the door, right? So, but we can be logical. We have talked in the past about, hey, we got a lot, you know, this situation's coming up, we should make a move, right? And we've talked about that type of stuff. That conversation is very frequent between me and Ryan. Um, but we can within the, pro I've always just been kind of kept my gutters and my barriers are this protocol. I got some ways, like the notes at the bottom are some kind of special conditions that have come up over the years. One of them is in play right now, right? So I've been able to manage effectively that outside of things I can't control, like it not raining, right. or people, riparians, utilizing the water, which is their right, but that obviously has an impact on the quantity of water in the lake, right? If you have 400 homes sucking irrigation water out of the lake, and you've got a ninth biggest drought in Metro Detroit history, that's going to have an impact on the lake level. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. I there was no say. water going over the weir last summer from yeah. June on, right? It was There wasn't enough water in the lake system. So it wasn't that the weir was set improperly. There was no water going over there the weir. There were some unrealistic. Right. But there are yeah. some unrealistic. In the winter and the water was at 22. Right. right. There are some unrealistic so. expectations out there where we will get calls from people during a drought demanding more water. Right. And I was like, I wish I had that power. Believe me. In, in 
but I have very little power, and that's more, not one of them. For more, uh, you know, kind of <laughs> gusto with it, like uh, I had a home that was built on Bayou Drive that was on the canal. I got a call from lawyers because when they set the basement for that house, they set it to the historic water level. 2021 happened. Higher water table for everyone. Now they're looking at suing because the home was built uh, at the elevation of the normal water table and now the basement's flooding. So they're looking for someone to answer for that, right? And they wanted to hear from me. How are you, in, how are you managing the weir? Are you liable for this basement being flooded, right? So that's a concern that other people share on the lake as well when you talk about keeping the water high, right? And, and that's also that balance that this is one of the very few times we'll touch anything private um, because of that, because now when they look for people to sue, who do you think they go to even though we're not the ones doing it? So we have to fight a lot of frivolous lawsuits and like boards are dealing with that right now, being sued because people assume you have deep pockets, they forget it's residents that are behind the lake boards. And if you look so, at sadly, the, this is happening a lot. the, you know, the limiting factor is the ability for the weir to pass water, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what results in the flooding. If we could pass water unfettered, right? And I knew I'm getting two inches, well, I'd drain the lake down the day before and then we'd fill it up with the rain. That's not how it works, right? And we're trying to manage this system, if you look at the protocol of the weir, in a 10 inch window. There's not many impoundments out there that they manage within a 10 inch water window, right? That's very narrow window of operation. To have a 10 inch is a leeway between what your maximum and what your minimum should be, right? So that's, a, that's asking a lot for a weir that may not be able to pass all that water down in a high water situation. Is there a normal? When you say that's narrow, is there like a normal amount? No, it just depends on the lake system, and I'm not even saying that, I mean, that would have to be studied by the engineer, yeah. right? Exactly. And, and you, they'd look at historic rain data, they look at levels, they look at what the watershed area is, right? Again, because if you're draining thousands of acres of land, that impacts the flashiness of the system. I mean, we had a period of time in the summer when all this evaporation happens and you're watering the golf course, the water level didn't change because the water level was high in Hammond Lake, Turtle Lake. I, it satisfied the, lake, the demand. They were, they were dumping it into us as fast as we could drain it out. And we had to drain wide open, <laughs> and yet it didn't change for a long period of time right. because our input, so tank, our input totally. thing is too small. You know, and you're getting, you know, you get delayed the rain, even like ditches are still running from the rain we got on Monday night, right? Yeah. And they're still running with water in them. And that's because we're in a spring saturated. The ground can't take any more water at this point. We're in those three day rain cycles where you kind of have a chance of rain every three days, right? So, and I'm kind of a weather nut. It's kind of part of my job too, because the winter I'm, I'm responsible for deploying the snow crews out there, right? So I'm keenly aware of how the precipitation in the winter, and then because of the weir, that follows into the spring for me, right? And that's when I'm looking at the, like again, I got dry weather coming next seven days. I don't know what it's gonna do after that seven, but at this point I'm comfortable raising that weir up. The level that the weir will be raised to will not pass any water, because it's like at 32.9, we'll raise it to the protocol 32, it'll, it'll stay right there around 32, right? And then we'll see what's gonna happen after that next seven days, right? Well, if we well, get I into another- I just measured it today, it's, it's, th it's 31 and three quarters. We were out there, what, yesterday? Yes. Was it yesterday afternoon, right? And it was, tw the, you know, 32.9 when we were there, so that makes sense, right? Went down about an inch, right? Yeah. So, but the, that's the limiting factor is that ability to pass that water through. So, so if you're, do you want, are you ready for us to go to the next one or do you have another question? I just wonder what's the next step on this change? Well, first we haven't heard everybody's yeah. ideas first and, and we don't vote on anything here because you can't vote at study sessions, but um, do you have any more questions and such for Noah before we go to Effie? No. Okay. And then we'll open up discussion again. I, I have uh, several concerns with what you mentioned with the inlet pipe and then with FEMA refusing to recognize that we have a potential disaster area with Club Drive, the dam, 
I think it was here. not, I think they understand there's a potential for an issue, but the cost benefit analysis didn't, like they don't care if a uh, golf course floods because you're not ruining houses. But they would be ruining houses if Club Drive disintegrates and then all of Forest Lake drains out. Believe me, we, we, we understand the need. It's okay. the state agency and the federal level okay. that it, our applications so, fall. So for. are we... The care that we flooded in 21, they told us house insurance is for that. Okay, so do we have a plan to reapproach them? No, that or? costs money. We've been there three times. The state police have told us it's a not a winner. State they police control. They manage. Private, yeah. They manage FEMA funds for the local entity. They have primacy on behalf of FEMA. The state police is our emergency management entity. Okay. Yeah. Anything disaster related goes through them. Okay. Yeah. So that's one approach. Yep. Another approach would be the tri partnership responsible for roads. What do, you, what do you mean? I mean, like, who would look at Club Drive, that section of Club Drive, to well, see what needs to be The Road Commission, up. so Terry Cunahan wrote a letter to the Road Commission in, like, 2007 that said, you know, if, if your road blows out and drains the lake, we're going to hold you responsible. The Road Commission wrote back to Terry Cunahan and said, if your lake blows out our road, we're coming after you to repair okay, our road. So, so. Very quick. But <laughs> now, okay, we've taken the control of the weir out of private hands. Correct. And you're managing it very appropriately from what I understand and what I've read. And I also trust Ryan's skills. But I'm still concerned about the integrity of that road. So I think for us not to address that as a 911 top of the chart issue in the next year or two is like sticking our heads in the sand. I don't want to be the next Midland. I have friends up there. I'm and that's that exactly, so. and, and, and I don't think the township wants that to happen. I don't think the county wants that to happen. I don't think the state would want that to happen. So where do we go next? to address shoring up that road so we don't face this issue. The road Obvious, The road commission. The road okay, commission. so then the that's what I would like to talk about is how do we do that? That would be through an SAD, through the road commission? Ah, uh, they would, I don't know. I mean, it's their road, so yeah. if So if they, you want to talk to the road commission, you would go to the road commission meeting. Okay. We'd certainly help you do that. Okay. It's a new ball game since 2007, so it's worth worth a conversation. I have no idea how it would go, but it's worth a, a conversation. Gary's really open over there. He's been, Gary. Well, I just feel like, you know, that's like the 800 pound <laughs> elephant in the room. Like this is well, the is biggest issue. It's one it of is them, for, for sure. You can be right. sure that there's many different viewpoints on it, but it, certainly they should know your, your feelings about it. Well, I don't think it, I think it's beyond feelings. It's, <laughs> it has well, it's to do with case. structural right. integrity. Right, but I'm just saying there's a lot of ways of looking at it, and they may not look at it the same way you do. She, right. She's trying to, yeah, she's trying to say she'll be an intermediary, though. Right. Oh, yeah, Marcia's, I'm happy to facilitate it, but there's no guarantee of the I, I understand, but I think unless we all sit down at the table to have the discussion to begin with, well, right. If you um, haven't talked to them since 2007, that was a long time right. ago. Right. And those were different people. So we're of a different mindset. And I'm not a lone cowboy out there. I, I don't want the homeowners putting their hands on the weir. <laughs> I want the system that we've established here. It has to do a lot with the liability. It's also why we can talk to the Road Commission and say, hey, Bloomfield Township is managing this. Our hands are not there. We don't have that liability that you thought we were causing in the past. So I think maybe with some more open minds and some common sense, maybe we can reapproach. Yeah, certainly. And I think you guys carry weight as a group of residents and a larger, like it's not just one person, right? You represent a lake board. I think that carries weight. Right. right. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we have meetings regularly with the Road Commission, so we can mention that as a concern, too. But I think the, you know, you guys reaching out to them and getting getting them yeah. to the table would well, be Well, don't a, you have a review coming up with the Road Commission? 
we do we don't have an open to the public but we can right. mention that right. and have connect them to them right yeah um i mean as a th almost like the lead thing in flint helps everybody to explain the importance of keeping lead out of water now but right but yeah people see the midland occurrence there are differences but it's very that's fresh in people's mind right and that makes an impact for sure and there it were is lives worth ruined coming on to that. the table the worst they could say is no i mean right and, and yes. know and why right <laughs> yeah. because then when it does blow out then you gotta something to go on right and then it or maybe dig into why their opinion was like their opinion that if your road blows out you know or if your lake blows out our road that might be in a circumstance where they were being accused at that point on, and right? we're certainly not going to do anything right. like that so, like i said these are we have a different would, mindset now the the I would love to get you connected with them, and Marsha can help as well. The one thing I want to let you know, though, there is a chance that they will say this is an SAD process. Because typically, although the county owns the roads, they don't have the m money and infrastructure to fix the county amount of roads we need fixed. So the reason we have so many meetings is Bloomfield Township has the most amount of SADs. We have tons of people fixing their roads because they're 50, 60 years old, and they they waited and nobody came to fix them, so now they're fixing them. So we do have a lot of meetings with them. Gary has been wonderful and easy to work with. We even set up new protocols of how we can, can get things going. So there is a chance that you're right, there are different minds there right now. Um, it's just I do want to always, I'm always the like let's set expectations is there is a chance though if you're looking to get them to replace the road, they might do that at the expense of an SAD or they may say, you're right, this is, something we'll fix but I just want to make sure that when we meet we go there like you said with open minds open right, hearts right right and right I yeah. just I, I want some common sense and your other point uh, the inlet pipe needs replacing or whatever mm -hmm. and you said the lake boards need to approve that is so inefficient well that's I mean, in the agreement that's in the agreement so, i don't have i don't have access to your guys's accounts for the right. money and the township can't fund it we don't. so i have a limit of 1500 bucks but i'm not gonna let a pipe fail but that's the next thing on the horizon right that to get it inspected i don't even know how much that costs but if i can do it for the 1500 that's allowed to me without having to go back to the lake board i will do that right but if i need additional funding because it costs three thousand dollars i'll have to go back to the lake board if they say no i have no remedy you know to recover costs and then we again public dollars on private property there'd have to be some extenuating circumstance like an emergency or something at that point to push it but there is no smoking gun at this point but a decision was made not to replace that inlet pipe that's why i was noting that and that's because that's the most likely issue that we have coming up Okay. And just to note, we're not even, we don't take in that $1,500 that we, we could be for managing because we do want to leave that there for fixing things. So I don't think we've ever actually nope. collected the $1,500 nope. from. Well, I mean, it, yeah. the maintenance that we've done is amounted to preventative it's just maintenance. Just raising the lower So we don't actually take that. We replaced yeah. the handle on the valve, yeah. right? We did that all gratis. That, you know, I didn't have charge you back for my mechanic welding. A, a widget together right. and right. So. because I'm new how many lake boards are tied into the cost of the weir you know three that are here now he's our captain he's okay. our, our <laughs> three okay so, of course, like, okay so like, Hammond and turtle don't have any skin in the game well, they have their own weirs they have to maintain so. their own weirs okay all right so it's us three okay Upper. Should there be four? Should there be four? Is it up an island? Island. 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 So there's and four. four. So they definitely have. Island. So island has its own weir. Island. So you know they would still hold. They still hold water even if this, you know, blew. Is, oh. is island part of it or because they have their own? Uh, who's in no, it? it's part Here of the resource. This is, oh, but it wouldn't so drain there. Because he has the agreement, shows it's just the three of you. Okay. So those are the lower It's in the original. So it's according to the agreement, it's just the three. Do you remember who paid for the weir? Uh, the residents. That's the SAD. township can't SAD. pay for any of this so, stuff. Yeah. If the in inlet pipe needs to be replaced, it would be the lake boards that would pay for it. Correct. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. What I'm limited by is without having to go back right. to the boards and convince you guys that this is a project you should spend more money on, 1500 is my limit. That's right. I'm just a parameter of the, you know, of the agreement. 
and it, I have to jump through more hoops and convince the lake board that it's, uh, and I hopefully, if we got an emergency and the pipe's failing, hopefully it's easy to convince you guys, but if I can't, then that's No, no, uh, the, the, that isn't necessary. Either we're all, you know, yeah. we all understand, and we all trust what you're doing. Okay, I'm, I'm I don't answering why I yeah, can't go There isn't going to be any argument. You come, just communication. It, for me, that's all I need, I gotcha. is proper communication. <laughs> I have full faith in the people involved. And we are open, like, give me a call. Okay, you know? great. 433-7728. <laughs> great. Give and me a you'll call. be sitting next to me at that table with the road commission, right? <laughs> well, I, I, there I agree <laughs> that that road needs to be addressed, right? And I don't think if we took them for a ride in the car on that road that they would say, oh, this is great. Yeah. So I don't, I think it's like a red thumb sticking out we'll there. We'll be your first advocate you know. at the meeting that we're having is it next week or the yeah, week after eight, for yeah. our strategy plan. Great. Because we meet with them annually, but then we also, because we have so many SADs, we're with Gary a lot. So. Great. Well, and my concern is that I would have a issue out there. I would come to the lake board and they would say no, right? And then I would have to look at a mechanism to... Oh force that repair right but i i think we're all logical people if i show you a hole in a pipe that's been in there <laughs> since the 50s i'm not blowing smoke right and i i gain nothing by another project out there in fact it's another project i have to manage so i mean literally okay mike <laughs> can i ask two questions one is is there any talk about paving club drive i mean i'll just go back that's what we're talking about the rcoc would might expect you to do an sad for that right but i mean it's separate from this construction do they do they i mean they, what, they club every, drive's not in great shape so no, I mean, but it's, a, they, it's, it an, it's a county road and okay. all neighborhood roads are county roads okay so that's why we have so many sad's we have to pay okay. for it ourselves so that, the only real tragedy would here if we repave Club Drive and didn't reinforce the road. Right. That would be a huge mistake. No, and right. they would probably build that right into I, the into the they design. They would have to take yeah. the well, base is failing yeah. there, right? Yeah. So they would have so, to address the base. They usually are, build yeah. that all into right. the design cuz right. they're they try and design them to last. They they say 15 but really they want it to last like 40 <laughs> cuz they know sure. the next time they're going to be there is a long time. <laughs> so Right and you know the Club drive, so yeah, they want it. They they have no funding to just replace roads in earnest, you know. Yeah. Then you kind of have the issue of the Forest Lake Country Club having a big section of land on there, and how that then the payment gets split up. That you kind of get into that then too. Yeah. So and, and the other question is, can't can't we just? I mean, maybe we can't do it now because we're not at the lake board sitting. But c couldn't we just make an agreement with the lake boards to do the inspection of the pipe? And and each we would pay we divide it up three ways, and, we as, and 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 do that as a 2023 thing. And then if we discover anything, we can. Well, we what can what do you think it would cost to replace the pipe? Um, well, I wouldn't recommend replacing it. I would recommend lining it. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, no, I have no clue. I don't even know how much it would cost to inspect it. So I think that's my first step is to bring in a company. They tell me how much it's going to because you got to plug it off. We got to wait for a time when we can do it right I, right I don't want to do it when I got seven days of rain coming because I'm gonna have a plug in the inlet right so we have to stage it in a dry weather time uh, they would take a look inside the pipe and they would tell me you know how what it a do you not need to do anything there's a system for rating pipe integrity they would use that system and they would tell me whether it needed to be aligned or not how old is it no, the, it's original. It's original. So it's concrete. I'm all for a survey line it. <laughs> however much I'm it is, ancient. just line it. Well, now you can see why it's on my radar as a concern for me because yeah. it's the it was untouched, so that's like red flag, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a linchpin mm -hmm. in the entire system. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's it, let's just do it. Well, well, however it. much it is, and if you do an SAD, you have to have 51 percent of the to line the no, pipe. she's talking not the, the pipe. Oh no, the lake but the lake board oh, yeah. who pays for that it would be the sad or sorry that if they have the money in their accounts they could pay it they would do a different sad so if they don't have the money, in their, so have the money in their account yeah. That's if it, if it falls board. outside of yeah, we do four years. No, budget. it doesn't. Just so, yeah, because depending on it, it could fall right in where they wouldn't need to do an SAD. Yeah, and I would yeah, take it out of their tank because it makes the pipe smaller. Some heavy it's marginal. Significant ones. It's yeah. rather than digging it up. We it, need the pipe bigger. Well, but yeah, that's, that's a whole scale that's change. I mean, the weir can't pass the water at this point, so a bigger tube in there, you know, is kind of fighting against the real evil, which is the width of the weir there. But that that you're talking. 
I know replacing the pipes more than fifteen hundred bucks, right? So you go that route, you're probably forty, fifty thousand, right? And you got to dam up the lake while they're doing it. You got to dig the pipe up. That's why I just thought of lining it. We line sewers all the time. We line water mains, and they still have the carrying capacity. It's a, yeah. it's a it's quarter of an inch. It's a, it's a fiberglass product, and it's. I mean, again, a quarter of an inch max, that's in a thick area. But we don't diminish the carrying capacity of a sewer when we, uh, when we line them. So it's negligible in that. It actually counteracts the roughness of the pipe and you get better flow. So it actually counteracts, it's really better in the end. Cause it, and there's no joints in the pipe and all that stuff. So. It's like a facelift. Yeah, or, a, or, a, or a good it's foundation that they right? put around the blemishes. That's what they did in during school. Yeah, that's yeah. what they told me. Talk, about, talk about, about a small world. I actually used to sell dermatology products in the 90s, and I used to go to Dr. Greg and to sell stuff. It all comes around, right? Um, now, I know you have some questions. You guys okay if we jump to some of Martin? Actually, right. we're good. I'm good. Have you got them all answered already? Yep, yep. Oh. I think we have some takeaways we could talk about. Yeah, I'm okay. wondering so, where are you going yeah. from here. So I heard, you know, a, a, a generalized concern about the inlet pipe and an inspection of the pipe to determine what needs to be done. That's a lake board question, which we could do. You know, we do need business meetings for these three lake boards anyway, um, and we'll put that. Can we on, do we a put joint on business agenda. meeting that's publicly. A joint would be better instead of do doing three separate. We absolutely could do a joint. Joint. Meeting. Because that way you're yeah. all together. Mm -hmm. We can actually make a decision all together instead of having yes. coming back right. to each other. I, yep. And then, Danny, if I, if I could just jump in. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about lake board action. The township holds the easement. The township holds the easement for servicing and repairing. Right. The way the original SAD was organized, it was a township SAD made up of the residents that are located within the three lake board districts, but it was a township SAD. And so maybe the, the way to proceed with this would be maybe uh, try to get some estimates on um, what it would take to take a survey to establish the existing condition of the inlet, present that to the lake boards and see if they're willing to um, consider that and then um, I think it may be small enough that the lake boards could just contribute the 1500 and uh, at least get the estimate so we know how much the estimate would be and then survey the lake boards to see what the level of support would be for it and if there's a sufficient level, then start the township SAD process. Couldn't we do that at this joint lake board meeting yeah. that we're talking about? Yeah, but I, I, what I'm saying is it, it, it needs to be do homework it needs to be a township SAD because the township is the one that has the easement to what access. Is it township SAD mm -hmm. to specific um, beneficiaries? Yeah, it, yeah, just like any other okay. SAD, it's yeah. it's the benefited properties. Right. Here, the benefited properties of the residents within the three lake boards, but the township is the structure for doing it. So we could still do this group meeting and come, like you said, with homework to there of what it would be. I just think having all three of you at the table mm -hmm. is a lot more efficient than having three separate meetings and then oh, no comparing kidding. notes later. We could move this a lot faster if we have a meeting together. So what you're saying, Mark, just so I'm clear, is the township has the easement. The township would be the one doing the work. The township would charge the lake boards for whatever the the the, the, the township is. would charge the residents within the SAD, just like any other SAD. We wouldn't do the work though. We would source it out. Well, right. Yeah, I mean, we'd yeah. we'd enter into the we'd hire the contractors, but yeah. Um, I guess it, it's a subtle so distinction. It's not a lake board SAD. SAD. And the lake board uh, beneficiaries are not the same. Indian wood. The beneficiaries are going to be the same, I think the PLE but is that the entity the organizing the special assessment district is the township. It's not a lake board project because it's not specific to the water quality of each lake. So what you're saying is we, more of a we general. would need to do a the lake, the township board would need to do an SAD process. Which exactly, requires. and that's what was done for the original. Which we wouldn't do until we knew that all these lake boards were, in, or sorry, lake riparians know that there is support for that to go forward. 
That's what I'm saying. We still need the lake. We have oh, representatives there. Right. Way. And then the other item was uh, the road commission and club drive and beginning conversations with regard to that. You've yeah. got a meeting coming way, up. Yeah. You'll help facilitate a conversation. Yeah. And then the third thing was uh, potentially, I guess, there was a conversation about an engineer and, and a uh, hydrologic study. But I don't. I think that, I think we know we're very very narrow world we're living in. We, I don't think there's any real big changes to be made without making a crisis for somebody. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. room for maneuver is very. <laughs> so then, two takeaways. <laughs> yeah. Did I how miss do you one? Get, how do you, how do you get Ron's? Con, uh, suggested changes considered to the operations though we could put that on this agenda for that same meeting because the reason why i say you can't vote here is it wasn't noticed that that was something right. being voted on uh -huh. so we do study sessions to get ideas because we're not allowed to talk together outside of this really? so that we know what to put and agenda quorum. believe it or not we follow this <laughs> we're, we're allowed to talk one or one on one but i mean you can't have more than three of us at a time Danny can't be in the same we can't be in the same room the talking about this board. Unless we're in a meeting. So study sessions give us a chance to learn what you're thinking so we can figure out what meetings okay. publicly will be noticed of, hey, this is what's going to be voted on. Come give your opinions because that way your your groups are all represented. <clears throat> right, and that would kind of cross that hurdle. You know, I don't want these decisions made in a vacuum between two people, let's say, right? There's right. more entities involved with this. So, you know, we need buy-in across the board is the kind of concern of the township that we're not right. catering to one group over the other, right? And really my, again, my goal is protect the infrastructure that's out there, right? And I think, you know, I'm going to protect even the high water, the really high water people, right? I'm going to protect them from themselves too, right? So, because there's also other issues that come around, like the lawsuits and the, you know, and then again, I get it. You can't get under the bridge. You can't, you know, that's true in high and low water cases. So it's it's a difficulty of that area. So. And so the third item actually is to consider changes to the protocol at this joint business meeting. Yeah, I, I think the protocol. There's been some suggestions. Uh, to modify it. I think those suggestions need to be presented and receive some feedback before the township goes ahead and modifies it. So, And the more we can get in advance, the more we can put in the packet so people can review it and possibly vote on it that day. We definitely don't want something brought that day or just the day before. So if you have suggestions, even though the date's not set, get them to know now so that it's available for all of us for review. No, I think you're probably already doing what Ron is recommending. But what Ron is saying is don't specify whether the valve be open or closed. I think if we remove that language, because you're already pretty much following what he's got under notes. Yeah, okay. Which could be attached to the uh, operations protocol. So in the future, if it wasn't you or N. Ryan out there managing it, somebody else would have a more detailed roadmap of how it's managed. Yeah, and I would consider that. I would just caution that the valve was put in because in that 2011, the wettest year on record for mm -hmm. Metro Detroit, right, there was flooding. They, the engineers stated that they believe the weir was unable to pass enough water. So they drilled that hole in the weir to allow extra capacity to pass water in an emergency or in these high level situations. So I wouldn't want to take that out without the engineers looking at how that impacts my ability to control it at that point okay right so that's okay. that uh, that's that's why that was put in and the whole thought behind that was is that the old structure was leaky and so that valve kind of took the place of the structure leaking water through it how valid that is or not I have no <laughs> clue okay. right it sounds yeah. a little far-fetched to me but the reality is the weir in 2011 and other years cannot pass the water Water fast enough to keep it from cresting the road there so um, that's why that valve was put into play allowing us to augment that lake level at a greater ability right Right, but I think Ron Ron's point is that it should be um, not as rigid right 
And if the well, engineers I'm, agree, yeah, that would be great. Right. That's fun. Which I don't think you're being rigid with it. No, I bought we, the valve no. was open and closed when right. it was supposed to be open right. even this spring, based on conversations we had. Yeah. So I don't think we're that far away. No, what I want is the assurance from an entity that's not me or you or you know an, an engineer to tell me, okay, that all makes sense, you know, yeah, and the that. overall Agreed. plan. Agreed. Yep. Well, and that's yeah. why it comes comment, back to. And that's, this is what this, yeah. my suggestions are basically what Ryan is Sorry, doing right now, right. and that's fine. And I got them, you know, at 659, so I have no clue. You know, I tried to read them, and I saw that they looked in format very similar, but that's all that I got through in the 10 minutes. It's, it's improving the language, not the process. I get it. My my, you know, my understand my falsehood at the beginning of this is that there were legal impediments to doing that. Now it's really comes down to agreement on what those changes are yeah. you know and more agreement on your guys' end then have HRC check the work you know just like a normal township SED because you guys I mean this is the this discussion here just displays exactly you know the different views that are out there on whether the lake should be low or high right it's everybody kind of has a we need to have consensus, and well, I think and everybody would enjoy operating. And we shouldn't consensus. have been talking off, Mike. What we were talking about that nuance of is it a lake board SAD or a township SAD? Just to let everyone know, too, township SADs are still where you do get 51%. Somebody from your area would go around. We just can't fund we, it where Mark, the mechanism. Can't you look at that? But we're not. I just want to so make, we can just approve it on the. the whereas lake the lake board can just say it yes. would be a lot easier if the lake boards can approve the costs. If. Okay, so what you're saying is a township SAD where the lake boards are the... Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. signers. I, I'd have to look at that. I've never seen that done before. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking, just, you know, with that <laughs> so Mark, one other thing to look at compete. is also we have that POA from Forest Island and uh, Lower Long Lake that, you know, the Terry Cunahan thing. There's lots of money there too. If this is a few thousand dollars, I think, and that represents, so that's all the riparians. So Terry would, I mean, I'm not the president, I'm only the, I think the vice president. I think Terry would. Terry would include Upper. Terry would. It includes oh, it Upper, but include not upper. Island. No, it's, no, it's got Island. No, Forest, no, she's forest the POA. And Lower, and Island. Oh, okay. It doesn't, oh, it include, doesn't upper. include Upper. So it includes one of I, the. But that's who used to maintain the weir anyway, okay. was that group, right, when Bob Whitbolt did it. So if it's a few thousand dollars, Terry probably would just pay Yeah, we it. have a meeting on Saturday. I'll bring okay. it up. And my sense would be that, you know, that's just fine. to find out the answer of the condition of the pipe, people would make that investment, right? It comes down to then if you got alternatives and how much does it cost to dig the hole, right, if that ends up being how it goes. But I, my sense would be that people would want to know that answer, right? And and I it will... It probably won't be much over fifteen hundred either, but I just just to get anybody, even a plumber, to come out, it's five hundred bucks now. So like, <laughs> right? you know, I can't really speak to how much that's going to be. So, <laughs> so but there's really the two initial things. funding is going to be um, to cover the engineer to look at the condition of the intake pipe and also to review any potential change in the okay. protocols. Okay. So Everything that. else after the assuming petitions are signed or however the SAD is structured, one of the initial processes there would be the design of the structure. That would all be rolled into the SAD cost if the decision is made to redo the intake pipe. Okay. So we're in that, another process at that point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This yeah. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? No, if not, I think we have some marching orders. <laughs> Yes, and we're going to try to set another joint meeting, a business meeting in this instance, to address these questions. And I can questions. probably get an estimate out of the uh, company in a couple weeks. So as long as that meeting's a couple weeks out or something, I can have at least what that cost is going to be to go in and take a look so at it. Have right? I volunteered to Tom to help us schedule something. <laughs> 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 you do it, ain't going to be me. So. <laughs> Boy, you and Steve are quick to volunteer people for things, <laughs> doing. He got us all here to begin with, so that's it. without Tom, all we right. wouldn't even be here. All right, Thank so you, we Tom. We'll come back again for um, where we'll have a bigger discussion at the next meeting. Great. If there's nothing else about these action items, I would look we for a motion. motion to adjourn? Adjourn. Motion by yeah. Mike Vlasic. Support. Support by Clerk Brook. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right.
Thank you guys. <laughs>